to another episode of Modern Mom Probs, where we try to solve the world's mom problems or at least have fun talking about them. If you like what we're doing, be sure to subscribe. Today, we're going to be talking about one and done parenting with Jen Dalton. Jen is a happy only child and a parent of one child as well just like me. We have a lot in common there. Jen has built a community of one child families on her Instagram account, One in Done Parenting. On her account, she breaks down only child stereotypes and sheds light on why it is great to have an only child and also to be one. Jen, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks, Tara. I'm so excited. I'm a huge fan and I love this conversation that we're going to have, especially because we're both only children with only children. And that's a pretty unique thing in this world. It really is. And anytime that I meet someone else in that same situation, I'm always like, ah, let's talk about it. And (laughs) I was originally going to do this episode alone. I had been planning an episode about one and done parenting for months, literally thinking about it. It was like on my list of to do's. And I kind of like kept kicking the can on it because it was a lot of work to have to write, you know, a solo episode. And when I learned about your account, I said, oh, no, I have to have Jen on. We have to talk about this because obviously, like I could give my own perspective about it, but I would really love to hear your perspective and we can sort of bounce ideas. So, okay, let's get into it. Jen, tell me a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I'm obviously a happy only child, raising only child with my husband, Chris. I started dating like senior year of high school. So we've been together a really long time, uh, 14 years. We have an almost five-year-old daughter named Nora. And then we also have a cat. And we recently just got a puppy. So it's kind of like a pseudo baby in our house right now um, named Rosie. And yeah, that's kind of my everyday life is family time. I love spending time at home. And I'd say in my free time, I really focus on building that community online for one child families. Yeah. So we also have a lot of pets, not a lot of pets, but, uh, my husband and I are (laughs) high school sweethearts too. So we have that in in common. So we've been together super, yeah, super long time. We've been together longer in life than we haven't been. That makes sense. We've been together dating for nearly 30 years. Like that's oh how gosh. long. I know. I know. We've been married 17 years. We got married pretty young. We, we've we been together for nearly 30 years. Oh my gosh. Uh, Good for you. I know. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, so in that time we could have had a hundred children, right? Um, in 30 years, but, but we didn't, we just chose one. Um, and then as far as animals, yeah, we have three cats. We have three indoor cats, and then we have three outdoor cats that we feed every day. So my son likes to say we have six cats, which we do, and it's it's a lot of cats. Um, <laughs> but, but that's a, that's enough about my my like you know pet situation. And and I always joke that like you know I have one husband and one child, and way too many animals. <laughs> That's funny. I've been saying I'm done. I got one husband, one child, one cat, one dog, and the doors yeah, closed or fine for more house plants. That's the only other living thing I want coming into my house is plants. <laughs> yes. All give me all the plants. Except for me, I always say that I kill plants, so I try not to do the plants. Like my son, thank God he's alive because at the rate that I kill house plants, he's lucky that he's as safe as he is. <laughs> It's harder to grow a plant than raise a child, I swear, sometimes. Like, it is. I'm watering it really you. I'm is. loving you. Why are you dying? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, Jen, what led you to be a one-and-done parent? Yeah, I did not plan on being a one-and-done parent. Uh, despite having a very happy childhood, I just thought you normally have two or more kids. I know that sounds weird to say, but my parents didn't necessarily want to have an only child. Um, My mom was unable to carry a baby. So I was born through surrogacy. And for them, that was a one time opportunity for them. So that's why I'm an only child. Um, So when I got to the point with Chris, my husband, when we wanted to have a family, we just figured like, let's have like two, three, four kids. We were 27 trying for our first child. Like we got tons of time we can do this. Right. And even throughout pregnancy, you know, I had some ups and downs. I still thought, yeah, like we'll do this again, but I had a very traumatic birth. 
Um, I had a failed induction and that led to an emergency C-section that I actually had to be unconscious for. The numbing wasn't working, uh, unfortunately. So literally I didn't see like the birth of my child happen. And even my husband didn't because the rules at the hospital were if someone, <clears throat> excuse me, if someone's unconscious, you can't have like someone who's not a medical profession professional in the room with you. So neither of us saw our child being born, which is still kind of crazy to me and sad, to be honest. And then she was in the NICU for a week, which I know compared to a lot of parents who are NICU parents, that's not that long of a time, but it felt a really long time, especially after what felt like an unsuccessful birth to me. I was unable to breastfeed and I literally tried to meet with a lactation consultant at the hospital three times and they never showed up. And yeah, I know. Isn't that crazy? Um, yeah. It's like wild. a reputable hospital. It's one of the best in our area. So yeah, all that together just really kicked off motherhood on a really bad foot for me. You know, you see on Instagram, like the moms like punching the air, holding their newborn baby against their chest and like, I really wanted that. I know you shouldn't go into it with high expectations, but I felt like that is what was going to happen for me. And then when it didn't, it, it sucked. <laughs> um, so then when we went home, you know, like we're adjusting to parenthood and for both my husband and I, it was a way bigger adjustment than we thought it would be. We're very successful adults. We have good careers, own our own home. We were like, yeah, like we have on paper, like we are ready for this. And I don't know if it's our personalities or what, but being a parent is really hard. <laughs> and by the time she was two months old, I remember it so clearly. It was like two months postpartum. It was a Tuesday. My husband came down from upstairs and he was exasperated because him and I were going back and forth trying to get Nora down to sleep. And it had been like that since day one, it was just really stressful. And he looked at me and he was like, I cannot do this again. Like I can't have any more kids. And as a postpartum woman hearing that you're like, whoa, <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> yeah. But it almost like it hurt, not in the way you would think it hurt because I felt the exact same way. And the fact that we were both saying that at the same time, is a blessing in one way to be on the same page with your partner, but it also was just very kind of daunting looking ahead. Like, oh my gosh, like we're, we're in this for 18, 20, I don't know, when do kids move out these days? Like 25, yeah. <laughs> uh, 25 years, right? And we're already struggling. Um, so yeah, that was the first time we had that conversation and that conversation has been open throughout time. I'm happy to say at five years postpartum, like life is amazing and no regrets, but those first few months and even a couple of years were really challenging on us. So yeah, don't want to go back to a dark headspace. Just want to get out of survival mode and focus on thriving mode for our family. Yes, that's exactly a very similar situation and experience that we had. I'll, I'll give you a little bit of background for me personally. Um, my husband and I, like I said, were high school sweethearts and we got married at 26 and then we decided to not start trying to have kids until we were about 29. And unfortunately, I had a series of miscarriages. And then after that, I had unexplained infertility. And then after that, I had some polyps, which is what was the cause of the infertility. And we had those removed. And then I couldn't get pregnant again. And we tried, I think it was three IUIs. It was like the last attempt of an IUI before we would have to do IVF. And it was like, what is happening here? And I'm, I'm saying this quickly, but it's over the course of several years at that point then. Yeah. Um, and so luckily Jack was conceived with the, the final attempt of, of IUI and I carried him fine and he was breached. So he was a scheduled C-section. So I knew what to expect um, going into it. So it helped me knowing like, okay, Tuesday morning at 830, your baby's going to be born. And that's just what it was. And, and that's how it went. Um, and he also was in the NICU because although he, you know, was, was full term and, and all of that, 
he got cold in the nursery. I think that the nurses had left him out too long and his blood sugar dropped and his temperature dropped. And so then he was in the NICU. And so he was born on a Tuesday. We were discharged on a Friday. So like you said, it, it was about a week and it was nothing like many other experiences of NICU parents. Cause I've spoken with many NICU parents over the years and that's an experience all by itself. I have a whole separate um, podcast episode about that because it is very challenging to be a NICU parent. So, so fast forward that, you know, we get discharged and actually the day we got discharged, I'll never forget it. We had a nurse and she said to me, I hope to see you next year. <laughs> oh my gosh, people. Eh? It's like, five, you're like four, five days postpartum. You're like, we're not talking about this right now. <laughs> I, I nearly died right then and there. I was like, what? Hope to see you here next year. I was like, yeah, no, that's not going to happen. Um, so we got the baby home and breastfeeding was hard. Just like you said, the breastfeeding was hard, but eventually, eventually we got it. So I was pumping and nursing and introduced formula around three months. So we were doing everything, right? Fast forward then to when he was a toddler and he was a very challenging toddler. Mm -hmm. His tantrums were explosive to the point where you like you were always walking on eggshells or you knew that if you were out in public it'd be like a ticking time bomb before you'd have to, you know, clean up and go home again. And so during that time between let's say 18 months to 3 years old is when most families tend to start thinking about having other children or or do have other babies. That was probably the absolute furthest thought from my mind during that time period. It was like survival mode more than even like newborn survival mode. I mean, that was challenging in its own respect, but th this had a new element to it. And so we were just surviving for, like I said, probably 18 months to three years old. He was a wonderful baby. So that actually wasn't what once we got over the initial newborn hump, like his infancy was actually quite great. It was the toddlerhood that was really hard. So we were also living in New York City at the time and we had an apartment. And and so we had a room, a bedroom, and he had a bedroom. And then there was a living room and a kitchen and that was it. So space obviously was a consideration for us as well. So add the space plus the tantrums we were like, this is not, it wasn't even a thought. It like wasn't even, you know, like a question of like, oh, should we do this again? Like wasn't even a thought. And then when he was nearly four years old, we moved out of New York City into the suburbs, into a house where we had space. And at that point, you could think like, okay, well, maybe we'll consider having other kids. And I was like, nope, no, we're good. Now we have all the space in the world. And I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to go through that again. And, and when we were going through our infertility treatments, my husband and I looked at each other and one day, I'll, I'll remember this because it was like 6.30 in the morning. And, and if you're familiar with infertility clinics at all, it's like they're opened notoriously early um, so that you could go there before you go to work in the morning. And so we were there really early and we looked at each other and we were like, almost like making a plea with God. And we're like, if we could just have this one baby, we will never ask for anything ever again oh. in our lives. Like we were like making a plea with heaven, you know, like begging, like, please, we just want this like one child and we got him. And so then that also added to it. So I think there are a series of reasons how and why we are a one and done family. And we're so happy and we're so grateful. And I often think, you know, I couldn't imagine us with a different frame. I, I wear earrings that are triangles because I like to think that our family is a triangle because it's three of us, obviously. And triangles are the strongest shape. And so yes. that's my, my special symbol on that. So that is my story about how we decided to become a one and done family. And, and even going back to childhood, right? My parents were divorced when I was two years old and my mother never remarried and she never had any other kids and my father never had any other kids. And so that was it. So, so it really wasn't much of a decision there. They, they were divorced when I was two. Um, and I loved being an only child. I loved it because I had wonderful cousins who I have another cousin, Erica. She is also an only child. And she and I practically grew up like sisters. Uh, she's two years younger than I am. 
and she was wildly successful. You know, she and I actually went to the same college. I went, we went to Villanova University and she went on to have a great career in finance in New York City. We have another cousin, uh, Anna, on my husband's side. She is an only child and she's an attorney. And so I often say that, you know, these only children do really well because they have their parents not only undivided attention and love and support, but also the resources, right? So that you're able to go um, to the schools that that you that you can get into and excel at, and, and all of that. So that's my my spiel on that. I also have an only child cousin two years younger than me, and my cousin and my husband also has a cousin on his side who's an only child. So. So many odd like simul- similarities. That's a <laughs> lot of similarities, Jen. I have to say, that's incredible. You so have to get that- to New York again. <laughs> yes, you absolutely do. Or I have to come up to Canada again, which is probably an easier way. New to- York's way more fun, so I'll come to you. <laughs> okay, duly noted. Duly noted. We do have a lot of similarities, though, and and I love that. So, what are some of the comments that you have received since starting your account, and then also like in your own individual motherhood journey? Yeah. What's great about being an only child with an only child is the people who know and love you aren't going to insult only children and project stereotypes, right? So in terms of my like social circle, it's been great, um, very supportive. A lot of my girlfriends don't have kids. Some of them want to remain child free. Others are waiting till, you know, mid to late thirties to have children. So yeah, I got a good mix of child-free, waiting. I have some other one-and-done mom friends in real life. And then all my friends or cousins that have multiples, they're very supportive of our choice. And I think a lot of modern parents can understand why someone would make that choice. I did hear occasionally in the beginning, um, like, you know, you might change your mind down the line. And that is true. You could change your mind, right? I don't think that was a very supportive comment at the time because I was clearly struggling with my mental health. But aside from that, I've never had like an only child stereotype like thrown in my face, not even growing up and not with having my own child now. But in terms of the online comments, yes. (laughs) Uh, Yes, people are very opinionated. And I think what I don't love about the comments is it's very black and white. So like if you're an only child and you're sharing your experience and you're saying like, in my experience, I didn't enjoy being an only child. That is super valid. Like you can say that that's your truth, your story, Mm -hmm. but then to turn it around, someone else might say all only children are lonely. All only children are maladjusted or selfish and whatnot, right? And we know those are all stereotypes. Like they literally stem from like the 1800s. It's crazy that we're even <laughs> right. using these stereotypes, but they've just been perpetuated after generation after generation. And most people know an only child, and most people don't believe they follow those stereotypes. So, yeah, getting the comments, like the typical comments, stere- uh, selfish, lonely, maladjusted. When your parents die, you're going to be all alone, you know, as if this like 60 year old doesn't potentially have a romantic partner, a child or two of their own, no neighbors, no coworkers, no friends that they've made in the six decades of their life. But yeah, they'll be all alone, right? Like, I- I've always insane. thought that that was a really weird comment. <laughs> I get it a lot. It's like people literally will send me DMs and be like, you're insane for having one child. Do they? Yeah. And they're like, you need help. I've been told many times that I need mental help because I'm choosing to have one child. They're like, if it was like you had a medical reason or, you know, you're separated or whatever, like that's okay. But if you have the ability to have another one and you're choosing not to, like you're a bad mother for not having another kid, um, like your only child was going to hate you when they're older because you didn't give them a sibling while you could. Like it's, it's super mean. Um, I've got tough skin. It doesn't like no sweat on my back type of thing, but it is just terrible to hear. And what really hurts is I imagine that some real people are hearing this in real life, maybe not as so aggressive, but maybe in more of a passive aggressive way. And I hear that from moms in my community, you know, their parents, their in-laws, 
friends, siblings will say like you are doing a disservice to your child. And I can't imagine someone who I love and respect saying something so cruel and insensitive to me. Yeah, I, I think a lot of it has to do with like breaking those generational cycles too. like how you, you use the word like modern parenthood. And, and I think that's really true. I think there's something in modern parenting that respects the only child or the women in the couples who choose to be child free. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. What is your favorite thing? Well, it's sort of a two part question. What's your favorite thing about being an only child? And then what's your favorite thing about being one and done? Yeah. So as an only child, I think I really benefited from having all my parents' time and resources regarding, say, financial resources as an example. You know, my parents are blue collar. Um, worked really hard, saved really hard to give me an incredible life. Uh, they paid for my all my university education. They helped me buy my first home. And there is no way they would have been able to do that and also retire at a reasonable age if they had more than one child. So I'm forever grateful for them because that gave me a massive jump start on adulthood. And then regarding like time growing up, It was fun, you know, like my mom every day sat at the kitchen table, helped me do my homework. I really think I get my good work ethic from the time and focus and patience that my mom was able to give me every day. And then, you know, in the summers, we spent our time adventuring, going on day trips. I could bring a friend whenever I wanted. So I have really good social skills from being around other children a lot of the time who maybe have parents who do different parenting styles or have different lifestyles. And I think only children are really forced to be social in an uncomfortable environment so that when you become an adult, you are naturally really social in any environment. And I know I can say that is true for me. Do you feel that about you being an only child as well? Oh my gosh, a hundred percent. Yes. Like, excuse me, a hundred percent. Yes. Because I can go just about anywhere and start chatting with somebody and and strike up a conversation. (laughs) And even my son, if we go to a playground and it's just like he and I at the playground, he'll make friends wherever he goes. And they'll start talking about, I don't know, Pokemon or I don't know, Roblox or (laughs) Minecraft, whatever it is that that 10 year olds talk about. Uh, They talk about all of it, by the way. Um, But he does, he always makes friends. And, And sometimes he, you would think that he's a shy kid in like larger group settings, but one on one at a playground, he will a hundred percent of the time make a new friend and and strike up a new friendship. And so, I I love that for him, and I know that that's how I am going places too. And I've never been afraid to go anywhere alone. Meaning, like I this is like pre pre Jack, but my husband used to have work conferences in Orlando, Florida, by Disney World, Universal Studios. I used to tag along with him while he was at the conference and I would go to the theme parks by myself. So here I am like a 30 year old lady and it was the absolute best. There would be like single rider, single rider. And I was like, me, me. And I'd go on like all the rides. And I remember this was the year that the Harry Potter world just opened up at Universal Studios. So this was like, I don't know, maybe 12, 13 years ago. And I was right in line at like 830 in the morning, ready to go. And they opened up the gate and I literally like ran, 30 year old lady ran to uh, Harry Potter world. And it was so cool. And I had the best time. So like, I can have fun by myself. And I think what you're saying too, is like, you can also have fun by yourself. And so that's what I hope that we can instill in our own children. And I know sometimes my son will be like, I'm bored. But I think that's also sort of a case of like wanting to play video games. <laughs> and that's Trying sort of to more beat him general- to say yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's more of like a generational thing with the video games, I think. But um, I love being able to, to just be alone. And, and, you know, if I wanted, not that I do, but if I wanted to go to the movies by myself, I would, and I could. And, and my mom, like I said, my parents were divorced when I was two. And so she's remained single all that time. I said to her like, Oh, go to the movies, like go out to lunch. She's like, I can't do that by myself. I was like, of course you can. She's like, no, I can't go like somewhere by myself. People will see me. I'm like, yeah, that's okay. (laughs) 
you. No one's yeah. no one's worried about you going to the movies by yourself. It's uh, <clears throat> excuse me. It's totally fine. Um, so that's sort of the the difference is that she does not like to be alone in public settings, and I am totally fine with it. I mean, not that I'm like running to do everything by myself. I'm not. I love being with my friends okay. and my family. But I'm just saying that I can go to a theme park and have the best day ever by myself. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that is a huge benefit of being an only child is I think in some ways you get the best of both worlds. You know, you get that peaceful home where you're the focus. And when you want quiet time, you know, I'm sure most parents are happy to have quiet time, right? You're able to get it. When you want to have friends over, you're more often getting the yes. Of course, you can have a friend over, you know, you're not having to be fair. Well, you know, your brother got a sleep over last night and we're kind of tired from it today you know what I'm saying yeah so yeah absolutely I think you get that opportunity for like some special social times with your friends as well like for example two weeks ago we rented a cottage um up north and we were able to bring one of Nora's school friends with us Aww, and her mom that's came so too. sweet my daughter's four like she gets to have a friend over for vacation that is kind of wild to me to be honest like you know that's such a great opportunity. And now like we're hanging out almost every day, like they're best buddies. Like it's so sweet. And I don't think we could have mentally handled having multiple little kids also bring other multiple little kids with us on our vacation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would be a lot. It really would mm -hmm. be a lot. It's true. We're just starting now to get to the point where we are bringing my son's friends to day trips with us. So in the last like two days, um, not two days, excuse me, the last two weeks, we brought like a different friend to like, you know, different trips and, and it's fun. It like makes the experience nice because you get to see them sort of in their element talking and chatting and hanging out in the backseat of the car. And also like it makes the car ride like a thousand times louder than a normal car ride when you have yes. multiple kids in the car. Yeah, Usually our car rides are pretty quiet. So <laughs> yeah it's next level but we haven't brought anyone like away away yet like you have but I think that's inevitable the parent when I did come with the child the parent was there so yeah, yeah I don't think I'd be ready to bring like a a sleepover yet for you know a young kid but sure but it, it's coming that's inevitable I think oh yeah for sure I love that idea and then yeah what do I what's my favorite thing about being a one and done parent um my favorite thing is getting to say yes a lot, you know, like when my daughter wants to take her time at the park, I can often say yes, because we don't have to get home for a nap time or, you know, a sibling is, they're done, they're over it, right? I love that we can go at her own pace. And like I said about the friends thing, being able to say, yes, you want to have a friend over, let's do it. Or yes, let's go to the store and get a new craft that you want. Or yes, let's run to the park and race all as a family. And, you know, me or Chris aren't behind trying to catch up with a stroller, you know, like we really get to move as a trio. And we're at the point now where she's almost five. Like it's really, really fun to be a parent. And yeah, like I said, like it's, it feels like we're like in our thriving zone right now. And I think Nora feels that too. Like she's thriving too. And I think when you're a one and done parent, you know, like some moms adapt to motherhood incredibly well with multiples. I know some in real life, they blow my mind and I have so much respect for their ease and beauty in doing it. For me, I know having another kid would just really send me backward. And that would be a disservice to Nora in some ways. You know, it could be from age five to eight, say I was having a baby right now, where she might not have a present mom or a mentally well mom. And those are really formative years, that preteen age. I want to be present and I want us to have lots of memories. So as she becomes a preteen and a teenager and a young adult, I know she's going to pull away from me. They're supposed to do that. That's developmentally normal. I really want to spend ages, you know, zero to 10, building a really strong foundation that will support us into our adulthood. Because when she comes back to me, you know, I want us to be best friends again. Yes. And I'm in that space now. My son is 10 and a half. And so he's starting to do that, that, that pull away. Obviously, we're still close and, and 
he'll always be my my little baby but he'll be like no mom i'm talking to my friends leave me alone like the thing that they do now is like they facetime while they play video games and he's like i'm talking to my friends i'm like okay fine i won't come in i won't stalk you so like that oh. sometimes makes me a little sad i'm like oh buddy but then you know i say that and then you know at midnight he'll have a bad dream or something and then he'll like run into my bed and, and sleep with me at night and then we get to snuggle and cuddle so it's, it's still okay he's not like officially grown up yet it's no, kids always will need their parents i'm i'm 32 i still need my mom and dad <laughs> oh, let's see. i love that you still have such a close relationship with them yeah they're great um we do live far from each other now we moved about five hours away from them about a year ago for career financial reasons no regrets making that decision but I'm definitely encouraging them to try and move up closer to us because, yeah, I do miss them. And, and, you know, I think that's another benefit of being a one and done parent. You do have that opportunity if you choose to to potentially live near your adult child. You don't have to pick and choose like, oh, well, one lives on the East Coast, one lives on the West Coast. I'm right in the middle, say, what do I decide? If you do have the means and desire to move, it's a lot easier to justify it and not play favorites regarding that so yeah I'm hoping they come up here in the next couple years too oh I hope so that we've said that to Jack too like wherever you go to college like we'll come in and live near you where you go to college so you won't be far so it's funny that you've had the the same conversations around that Mm -hmm. what about cousins so the only time of year it's literally once a year I feel a little sad that Jack is alone is around Christmas because growing up for me, I had a lot of cousins. And so there were always kids at the holidays. Now with him, I'm an only child, as I mentioned, my husband has one brother who is child free and I don't believe that they're going to have kids. And so my son tends to be by himself on the holidays. And so I often think to myself, you know, it makes me sad. Do I, does it make him sad necessarily? Not really. I mean, it's his normal, right? So he doesn't know what it would be like to to be in a house full of people. And so my question to you is like, is there ever a time, even if it's once a year that you kind of think, well, you know, be a little bad? Yeah, I'd say it's Christmas as well. Um, also similar to you, I had a lot of cousins growing up. So, you know, we'd have Christmas morning, my mom and dad and I, then it would be like lunchtime going to my dad's brother's house, I'd see a couple of my cousins there. And then at nighttime, we'd go to my mom's, my grandma's house, and all my other cousins on that side of the family would be there. So yeah, I'd say like Christmases were like rowdy, right? Um, Whereas now with my child, yeah, she doesn't have a lot of cousins. Um, My husband also has one brother, he is not child free, he has two boys, but my my brother-in-law is nine years older than us. So his kids are 10 and 14 right now. And I love them. I adore them. But obviously, it's a different relationship having two preteen and teenage boys with my toddler daughter, right? They're mm-hmm. really sweet with her, but it isn't the same relationship as having cousins close in age. We are very lucky that my husband's cousin has an only child daughter as well. And they're the exact same age. So we do live a few hours from each other. But whenever we're in the area or they're up here, we ensure that we see each other. We're planning on going to Disney World with them in November. So I think, yeah, it it is hard when they're not near them. Because even though we have a few, they're not close by. So yeah, Christmas is the time where I'm like, oh, it'd be nice to maybe have another kid running down the stairs, right? And getting excited. But one thing that I've, been thinking lately um you can't give your child everything they can't have every experience under the roof and we have to be okay with that because as a one and done parent we're able to give our only children experiences that maybe parents and multiples aren't able to give and vice versa you know there's no perfect family size for everyone it's not one size fits all but yeah leaning into that feeling of it's okay if this maybe isn't the ideal way that I think it should go but like you said they don't know any different like it's your it's your childhood to us being only children with cousins we feel a little sad our only child isn't surrounded by cousins at Christmas 
but for our only children, that's just Christmas Day, right? That's still a fun, amazing day that they're having together. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Actually, the other day, my mother called me and she said this exact words. I'm so glad you don't have brothers and sisters. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, why, mommy? And she's like, my brothers are so mean to me. And mm -hmm. keep in mind, they're 70 years old, right? So you would think that they would have grown out of any BS that they had when they were kids or teenagers or even 20 something. They're literally, my mom's 68. Her brother is like, I don't know, 72 or whatever. The other one's like 65. Um, and they're mean to her still, even now. And I mean, that's their own family dynamic. So it's not every family dynamic, but I just thought it was so funny that she called me and was like, thank God you don't. That's like literally how she talks. Thank God you don't have brothers and sisters. <laughs> It's crazy. My mom's one of three and uh, middle of three girls. And yeah, she like she loves her sisters. Don't get me wrong, but she complains about them. And, you know, the relationship has ups and downs. And yeah, it's complicated. And she'll say the same thing to me. Like, aren't you glad you're an only child? I'm like, yeah, I am. Because this seems like really dra it's drama free living. Yes, you choose to in your social circle. You can, if some, a friendship doesn't work out for a certain reason, like you can say bye to them and it's okay to have someone in your life for a short period of time and then move on. Whereas with the sibling, they're probably the longest relationship you'll ever have. But if that relationship is not a positive one, that can cause a lot of trauma and stress in your life for really your whole life. And there's pros and cons to it. Yeah, I say that to, to her all the time and, and to myself. And then that also obviously helps validate our own decision. Yeah, to be a one and done family. Yeah, I kind of like I'm not that I'm happy. Sometimes my mom has like a little bit of stress, obviously, but sure. it does validate it. And I also just love parents of multiples who are honest about it. Like I have some people in my community who actually are only children who chose to have multiples and they'll message me and be like, you know, like, it's okay, the decision you made because like my kids fight all day, every day, 24 seven. And it's stressful. And you know, that also is really validating to hear parents of multiples validating your choice to have an only child. Yeah, yeah. So what advice would you give to a family that's sort of like on the fence about being a one and done family? Yeah, that's a tough spot to be. I've been there. Like, when my daughter turned four, so this would have been last September, Chris and I were really considering having another child. We moved into our forever home. We really like settled down in our careers. Finances were good. And we're like, you know what? If we want to, now is a good time, right? So we actually took a break from my platform. I said, like, you know, we're having these feelings. I need time away from social media because seeing that content a lot, like bigger family content, it's very romanticized. Like, you know, you're a creator as well. You consume a lot of content to create your own content, right? Unfortunately, and yes. I consume yes. too much content. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, you know, you see people, a lot of pregnancy announcements, gender reveals, and just like siblings being cute together in like a 15 second clip. And you're like, oh, I love that. Um, and that can influence how you feel about your own family. So I was like, I need a break. I'm stepping away. And then Chris and I developed like this question we'd ask each other each night and it'd be like, do we wish we had another child with us today that was like in our care full time? So, you know, if we're doing school drop off, do we wish we had to do daycare drop off after? If we're at the park, do we wish one of us didn't get a break with a hot coffee on the bench and both of us had to be running around, etc. And it wasn't always the negatives. We looked at the positives too. Like, you know, when we went to the science center today and had a fun family day. Do we wish we had another child with us? And every day we answered no. Like we really felt content with our family when we took comparison out of the equation. So that kind of asking those types of questions as a couple could uh, be really helpful for people who are on the fence. If they don't know, you know, really look at the day. Do I wish I had that other person with us right now? Um, journaling is really helpful, sitting with your partner and writing out, you know, your one year, five year, 10 year goals. And then if you were to have a child, how do they fit into those goals? They may fit really well. And maybe having a second child is the right decision for you. It might not be though. You know, if you're having doubts, it's good to explore those doubts before bringing this whole other being into this world because, you know, children should be wanted. Both parents should feel 
a hundred percent on board when having them. And I know a lot of people have that second child to give their child a sibling, like giving a human being to someone else. They're not gifts to give. They're individuals. They may not be besties with your firstborn. They could have a struggle, a, like a tough relationship with each other. And you as the parent need to be on board for that. So if you feel okay with that, then yeah, maybe a second's good for you. But if not, you're not doing a disservice to your only child by not giving them a sibling. They're going to have a great full life. Having a happy, stable home with happy parents is much more important than a sibling. Yeah. I always think about how lucky we are to have, and people use this word too much, but I'm going to use it anyway, the village, right? Like we yes. may not have siblings, but when we have wonderful friends and family friends, and then even sometimes you may have friends that you call like aunt or uncle for your child. Like I think family many times is what we make it. It hundred percent is like, I look at my own life. I have so many people who I've had from childhood. And then I also have friends who like, I met literally made a new friend three weeks ago or hanging out later this week again, you know, like you can build your community and your village up throughout your entire life. And I have a cute little story with my daughter. Um, the other day she's doing chalk on the pavers that we have and she's making little ticks and she's saying different people's names. She listed over 30 people who she loves. Oh, and she's, that's so she's sweet. only five. And it was, some of it was biological family. Some of it was those, you know, pseudo aunts and uncles. Some of them were friends for school, her gymnastics coach, so many people from so many different areas of her life. They might not be in her life forever, but those, you know, 30 places will be filled with different names throughout her life. And just seeing her do that, it just like filled my heart up. And I was like, yeah, you, you have like an incredible life and I don't feel guilty or shame for not having a second child. Jen, you are amazing. Thank you for sharing that story. <laughs> You're amazing. <laughs> oh, stop it. Jen, where can we find you online? Um, so I'm just on Instagram. Uh, you can find me at one and done parenting. Love it. Everybody go follow Jen. Jen, thank you so much for being here today and sharing your story. Thanks, Sarah. It was such a great conversation. I got to get to New York to see you. <laughs> you do. Absolutely. Bye. Bye.